Did you know that you might be missing out on views and engagement if you're not using the sounds from Instagram Reels or TikTok for your videos on those platforms? But if you're anything like me, you don't really like making the videos inside the app and you would prefer to use your computer and your proper video editor. So the question is, how can we get those sounds out of the app use them to edit, and then bring the video back in so that it still lines up perfectly. This was a hugely requested topic after I mentioned doing this in my last video about Instagram Reels, so that is exactly what I'm going to show you here today with a couple of little bonus tips and tricks that'll make your videos even more compelling, so make sure to watch all the way through and leave a comment if you have anything that you want to add or a different way that you like to do things. Now, first things first, it might not always make sense to use the sound or audio from the app. If you're doing a comedy bit or something where you actually need to use the original audio, just do that. Don't overthink it too much. If your video is great, it'll work. But if you find a great trending sound that you think is the one you need to use, here's how I've been doing it inside Instagram Reels, but the process for TikTok should be basically the same. First, we need to actually find that sound. There are two ways that I typically do this. The most common way is just by scrolling through videos way too much and coming across stuff that I either like a lot or I notice getting a lot of use. If you're hearing the same sound over and over, that probably means that it's popular and using it might actually give you a little boost in the algorithm. So if you come across something that you think you can work with, you'll want to click on the sound name at the bottom and it will bring you to a page that shows you other videos that are using that sound. This is another place you can double check and see if that sound actually is popular. Look at how many videos there are and how many views they're getting. You can make a bit of a judgment here whether they're actually trending or not. The videos here might also give you some ideas for what you can do with the audio, and hopefully once you've used the sound, you'll be showing up at the top of this page as well and getting more views because of that. Now, from here, we can either click Use Audio at the bottom if we're ready to go, or up at the top, you can click Save Audio and start to stockpile potential audio for a rainy day. The other way I like to find sounds is just by searching for them directly, either on the search page or by starting to create a reel and then clicking the audio button on the left. So let's say, for example, there's a specific song that I want to use. I heard this song Boss by Locks on Musicbed the other day, and I think it would make a really great reel. This audio searching page is also one of the places where you can find your saved audio. And as you can see, I've saved a whole bunch and probably only ever really used a few of them. Once you've decided on your audio, the next thing we need to do is to get it from the phone to the computer. This is one of those things that's really simple in concept, but can be a little bit tricky to do. First, before I click on the audio, I want to start screen recording. If you're using an iPhone, this will automatically record the audio for you. If you're using an Android, you may have to select an option to record the audio, and we do want this on. Now, when you click on the audio, it'll bring you to a page where you can select which part of the sound you want to use. Try your hardest, it ain't nothing to me. This is where it can sometimes get a little bit tricky because our ability to select the perfect timing or start point for the audio is super difficult here compared to in a proper audio or video editor. But it is super important that we get it right here because it is very difficult to fix later. So you'll have to fiddle around with it for a bit until you think you have the audio where it needs to be and then let it play all the way through once to record that audio on your screen recording. If you're having trouble finding an exact spot on the beat of the music, I generally will go just a little bit earlier than I think it needs to be rather than a little bit late. Now that we found the right place for the audio and recorded it, what I typically do is just hit the record button in the app as if I was making a reel, and then I click the X to get out of the reels editor and it'll give me the option to save it as a draft. This allows you to save the exact position of the audio that you painstakingly found so you don't have to try and find it again later. Now you can exit TikTok or Instagram and we need to transfer that screen recording that we took earlier to the computer. Generally, I just use AirDrop, but you can use Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever you like. And now we're ready to edit our video. 
So in my editing software, I'm going to pull all my video files that I need, including the screen recording that has the audio on it from Instagram. I can get rid of the actual video portion of the screen recording, and I wanna find the very beginning of where my real audio will start, and I wanna make sure that this is butted up exactly against the start of my timeline. Once I've got this all lined up, I'll try to find a good looping point for the end as well. It doesn't always work out nicely, but I like to have it if I can. In this case, there's a little bit of a buildup at the start, and then there are a few bars of the chorus. I'll basically chop the chorus early as if it was going back to the buildup again. If you want more information on counting and editing to music, check out this video here. To check whether the loop is working right, I can either use the looping function in DaVinci Resolve by setting an in and out point and then clicking the loop button and hitting option forward slash, or I can just copy the audio and paste it at the end to check the looping point. Once you have the audio all set, you can edit your video however you want as long as your video ends up at the same end point as the sound, you're good to go. In this specific case, I'm gonna repurpose some old footage I have that I think goes well with this music. This is where you can showcase your mad editing skills, color grading skills, visual effects skills, or just sync up some photos to the beat if you want. Once the video is edited, we need to export it in a way that is ready for Instagram. Instagram is still limited to 1080p, but vertical, so I've created a preset for that in DaVinci Resolve. The settings are 1080 by 1920, 23.976 frames per second, because that's what I shot. I click restrict to 16,000 kilobits per second under the quality section. Under the advanced settings, I choose P3 D65 for the color space tag and sRGB under the gamma tag. This seems to help with that gamma shift issue that sometimes happens when exporting from DaVinci Resolve or Premiere, or pretty much all of them. Basically, after I export it, it still looks how it's supposed to, how it looked when I was editing it. Then we're gonna send the video back to the phone the exact same way we sent the screen recording over in the first place. And now it's time to line this video back up with the audio in Instagram Reels. Once we open Instagram, there are two ways to get back to the draft that we saved earlier. First, you can go to your own profile, click on your Reels page, and in the top left corner, you should see Reels Drafts. The other way to do it is to go to your feed and you can click the plus icon as if you're gonna make a new post, then click Reel. In the bottom left, you can find a button to add photos or videos. Click that, but instead of Recents, choose Drafts. Then click the draft with the placeholder from earlier. In this case, it's just a black screen and it's three seconds long, but I know that's the right one. Now, silly Instagram thinks our draft is already ready to publish, but it really is very much not so. So we're going to click the edit button in the top right and then click the back button to take us back to the real editor page. Now we need to get rid of that placeholder video. So click the left arrow and then click the garbage can to discard it. Now we can swipe up or click from the bottom left button again to choose the correct video to add in from our camera roll and click add. Next, click preview and we'll be able to see the video with the Instagram audio on top. To double check that the audio is correct, we can click the music notes at the top and we can bring up the volume of the camera audio. If everything worked right, it should sound kind of strange and phasey, but you won't hear any echoing. If it didn't work right, you'll hear two distinct repeats of parts of the music or sound. If you do need to adjust the audio, you can click edit under the right sound and adjust. But like I said before, this is really difficult and hard to line up. So a little workaround is just to use the audio from the camera, which basically means the audio baked into our video file in this case. If I need to do this, I'll set the camera audio to 100 and the other track to one. This puts it so low that you can't actually hear it, but I always worry about setting the track all the way down and potentially telling Instagram that you're not really using the track at all, and then it might not show properly on the page for that sound. I have no proof that putting it all the way down would actually do anything bad, but I went to a lot of trouble to use the audio from Instagram, so I want to make sure that it actually does what I was trying to do with it. Once we're good to go, we can click done and preview our video. You can click next if you're feeling good and we're ready to post like any other reel. Set your cover photo, use your hashtags, try to get engagement in the comments, whatever you feel like you need to do to please the algorithm and publish.
So I hope that was helpful for you and now you feel comfortable doing this for your own reels. But as always, I want to hear from you. How would you use the sounds from reels or TikToks while still editing in your NLE? Do you have a different way of doing it? Leave a comment down below and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.